Hello, so in this tutorial I will show you how to use uh, Cell Profiler. So I will uh, show you the basics of how it works, uh, how to create a pipeline and for this I will use an image that you can find if you are familiar with image J which uh, is this uh, set of uh, HeLa cells. So I've just converted it uh, for the sake of this demonstration, but it's basically the, the sample image that you can get from uh, Fiji. So when you launch uh, Cell Profiler, what you will see is uh, this welcome screen here. So you can try the examples, uh, see the tutorials uh, and manuals and so on. Um, here I will just close this window here and start directly by dragging and dropping the HeLa cells image here. So that's the first step. So uh, here you have four steps that are all related to the data you will input. How to read the images and how to uh, rename and organize them. And all the rest are modules that you will add to the pipeline to uh, process the images and uh, do some analysis on them and later on also segment uh, and uh, output uh, any kind of uh, results whether it's uh, graphs, uh, masks or even uh, excel sheets. So if you want to display the HeLa cells here uh, within Cell Profiler you can just double click here uh, you will get a window like this uh, where your image is normally displayed so since this is uh, an image um, uh, that has uh, I think it's uh, 16 bit something like this uh, it's probably not uh, uh, displayed correctly here so you can adjust this um, by clicking uh, either uh, sorry uh, right clicking here and press adjust contrast when you do that, you get this uh, small menu here and you can choose normalize for instance, press OK and then you get this uh, normal view. Uh, you can zoom in a part of the image, for instance like this here and uh, you can use the ruler here to measure objects. So if I drag here this small line I can get the diameter of this uh, vesicle here and you will see the length appearing here uh, in the bottom right of this window. So for instance this should be around 14, uh, so I think it's pixels uh, here, it's, yeah, it's probably in pixels. Okay, so this is what your image looks like um, and we will get back to it probably later on to measure again some stuff if needed. The next step is to uh, extract some metadata from this image so that you can organize the channels if there are some or uh, slices, uh, time points if it's a time series and so on. So here I will choose to extract uh, the metadata and the next step is to select the method uh, how you on how you will extract this um, this metadata. So you can do it either from the files uh, or folder names, uh, import from an external file while well, you will describe manually how uh, you should organize the, the, the data, or from the image file headers. This is my personal favorite since working with the microscopy uh, files. Most of the time you get uh, everything you need already written inside uh, the header of the file. So I choose this option and by the way um, uh, this is a module uh, like all the modules you will add later on here in the pipeline and they all look the same uh, so you have uh, from top to bottom instructions and uh, how to uh, configure the module and if you need help uh, for instance you can just click on the question mark next to the line uh, you are focusing on and you will get uh, the contextual help for, for this specific function here. So it's pretty pretty nice to understand how, how it works. 
it might take uh, some time but uh, I mean at the end it it's really valuable especially if you use self profiler with a lot of files because uh, working in a batch fashion is built in so that's really the strength of this of this program so uh, I want to extract metadata from all images so let's do it it uh, and normally here if I press update yeah I should have now um, information coming out of the header of the file so you can see it has detected that we have three channels here uh, and the size of the image also uh, is, is here uh, the dimension is x and y so this is not relevant for us What's interesting for us is, for instance, this uh, C uh, parameter that we will use to create the channel in the next step. So let's go to the next step, which is names and types here. So here we want to uh, separate this file into three channels. So in order to do that, uh, we can uh, here assign a name to any images matching rules so why do I have multiple images here it's because at the metadata step here we have separated our um, original file into uh, three images so let's do that uh, so any image matching a rule will be uh, renamed and there will be some transformation going on so uh, here what we want is uh, we can leave processes 3D now. Uh, we want the parameter metadata that does have an it's already selected C matching, for instance, zero. Since again, if I go back to metadata here, uh, we have zero, one, two, and uh, one. Uh, yeah, zero, one, and two, like this. So. Uh, the first channel will be the red channel so let's call it red channel it's always meaningful uh, and useful I mean to get to give a meaningful name to any kind of object you will create uh, through your pipeline because it's easier later on to uh, identify them uh, when you want to refer to them so let's check if this works press update yes we have now the red channel object that is um, built and we have one image inside so we can just duplicate this and change just the parameter here and C matching one will be the green channel and by the way I know the order of the channel here just because uh, I've tried several times but also because I verified by opening the image uh, here in FPG, we open it again. So it's red, the first one, the second is the green, and the third one is the blue. So green channel is one, and let's duplicate this again. We should have two, should be the blue channel. So let me update, we have blue green and red channel and the three images has been have been uh, correctly dispatched the last step uh, which is called group is actually not needed in this case it will be useful if you want to regroup images coming from uh, let's say um, a high throughput system or a multi-well plate where you have uh, images come multiple images per well and you want to regroup them per well or per uh, region on the well or per condition and so on usually those files are uh, labeled according to where the image was taken uh, at which time point at which location and you can extract from the file name at the uh, name and types or at the metadata uh, step to codify uh, everything and regroup them at this step so here it's not needed so let's just keep it and uh, by the way, I didn't mention it, but uh, what we want to do is on an image like this, 
identify the nuclei, identify the cytoplasm, and maybe have some information on the vesicles in the on the wet shower. So that's quite common as a as a pipeline. Uh, so let's just uh, try to do it uh, with cell profile. So uh, to add a new module, you click on the plus button here, and you will see a list of all the available uh, modules here. And the first thing we want to do um, is uh, probably do some smoothing on the blue channel. Um, because let's say, let's do it without and check how it looks like. So usually what we want to do is first detect the nuclei. This is almost always the same step with whatever software you want to use. So um, I will use object processing here. And here I will use identify primary objects because nuclei are the primary objects you want to find. So I double click on this here. I can close the window, I will open it later on. And so you get this line here where you have this eye here, which means I want to display the results. If I check this, I won't see the result of applying this module. I have the uh, the small uh, cross here on the, the red circle. Uh, that means that it's not configured properly and it will not provide a good result yet. And then you get the name of the of the module. So here I first have to select the input image. So I will want to use the blue channel. Okay. And now I have to give a name to what will be produced by using this module. So here it will be nuclei. Then I can uh, put some parameters like uh, the typical diameter of the objects. So if I don't know that, I can just go back here to image, double click on my image, display it uh, by changing the contrast again. Yeah. And do a rough measurement. So 130 approximately let's try a few times 100 and then line. Ah, something between let's say 80 and 160 should work so here 80 and 160 here i can specify if i want to discard the objects outside of the diameter range so objects that are smaller or larger than this range Yes, uh, and discard objects touching the image border. So you don't have any at this point, but it's common to do that. So that's why it's um, enabled by default. And now if I want to check how it looks like, um, I will use the test mode here. So I will start the test mode and I can proceed step by step. Here I just have one step, so I can just press step and it will show me something like this. So what you can see here uh, is the original channel and the nuclei and the outlines from the nuclei that have been detected. So we can see that there's a slight problem here is that uh, first of all, it has divided this nuclei into all separate objects. And here, this one is not, um, uh, is not covered entirely. And we even have one small object that was um, uh, excluded here. Uh, outlines in green are objects that are retained and objects uh, outlined in uh, purple are objects that have been rejected. Um, that is according to uh, the settings we've put here. So how can we improve that? Uh, well, there are several ways. We can pre-filter the image by smoothing it. So that's one option. And the other option is to uh, use the advanced settings here. Uh, and we can change, for instance, I won't go through all the parameters here, but usually what you want to do here is threshold the image and then um, do some, um, uh, how do we say that? Uh, it's not object recognition. Um, yeah, I forgot the name, but anyway, 
it, it's uh, separating the objects uh, into several instances. So uh, you get a binary image, and then uh, you have to identify each object separately. So um, here, what I want to do is be careful about the method here to distinguish clamped object. Here, you see the, the setting is by intensity. So uh, since on our image uh, that I just closed, um, the intensity is quite variable across the nuclei. Uh, that's why it has been divided by two in two objects. So I, instead of using intensity, I will use the shape to distinguish between uh, clamped objects. And then, um, yeah, I can leave the rest by default for the moment. And let's just check if by just changing this parameter, we have better results. So I can press on step again. And immediately you can see uh, it's already resolved. So that means here we don't really need to do uh, a smoothing step. Uh, if you want to get a more roundish objects, we could uh, change the, the parameter here, or we can also add another uh, step before. So just for the uh, sake of this demonstration, let's do it quickly. I can add a module here, which is in the image processing category, and it's called uh, where is it? Image smoothing? Yeah, smooth. Yeah. So let's double click to add smooth, and we want to smooth the image before doing that. So we can reposition, select the module here, and we can reposition it using the arrows. So I put it on top. The first image should be the blue channel and I will use a Gaussian filter for instance. I will leave uh, the algorithm to find the correct uh, diameter for the Gaussian filter. So this is the sigma and I need to give a name. So let's call it blue channel filtered, something like this. And on the identify primary object, uh, here the input image should be now blue channel filtered, the one we have just created here. So this is how um, a cell profiler works. So that's why you have to be really careful with the naming, since if you have a lot of steps, it could become quite a mess and quite difficult to understand uh, what you are doing. So let's proceed again by pressing the first step. So here we have blurred the nuclei. So this is the first step. And the next step is uh, detecting the nuclei and identif identifying them as separate objects. So that's, that's quite nice uh, as a result. So next step uh, is to, um, to do the same and to detect the cells. So we will use the green channel for that. Um, but again, uh, let me just open it again. Uh, for the demonstration here in Fiji, uh, if I um, just split the channels quickly so it's easier to see, I will use this channel here. And the problem is that uh, since it's, uh, I don't know if it's staining uh, mitochondria or anything like that, the thing is that the signal here is quite messy. So to cover the area, what we can do is again do a, a, a smoothing, uh, but just on, on the green channel this time. So let's select this step. I don't want to configure it again, and I can just uh, uh, right click on it and duplicate the step. So if you have, so in here you have a very few number of parameters, but if you have uh, a large number of parameters like this, duplicating a module uh, is quite fast if you want to apply the same uh, the same transformations uh, to another object. So uh, that's why I do this this way. So and instead I will use the green channel and call this green filtered. Okay. So now, instead of uh, using identify primary objects to detect the cells, I will use the nuclei I have detected as a starting point. So that means that I won't have more than four uh, cells here. 
and to do that again I will just add an object processing category uh, module which is identify secondary objects so the specificity of this module is that uh, you have to use uh, the input image so we'll use the green channel filtered and we use also an input object which will be the seed points for the detection here we have just a nuclei so we'll use that and we call that uh, cells again there are several methods to do uh, the identification uh, several parameters to adjust here I don't know where I stand so uh, let's just proceed step by step to see how it looks like by default so the green looks like that the nuclei we already know and the cells well they look okay you can see like that uh, it has divided the two objects that are touching each other uh, so it's perfect for me those areas cover approximately it's not exact but approximately the the different cells it's fine for me so next step is to identify the vesicles uh, so again we can do that by adding a new module here and to identify the the vesicles we can use um, again a step from a primary object here because we're going to use all the vesicles here I will use the unfiltered red channel I will call this vesicles correctly it won't work vesicles uh, and for the diameter uh, let's go back and check again just to make sure I don't do anything wrong uh, let's zoom in this area to have an idea so vesicles are usually around yeah seven and the largest objects are 15 okay between let's say uh, 5 and 15 so we should be on the safe side by using those uh, parameters so 5 to let's say 15 so if I do that uh, I will see if I identify correctly um, my uh, my vesicles let's try it and if I look now let me just magnify a bit this window if we look here we can see that it's not perfect and that is probably due uh, to uh, several factors so um, first of all we have uh, spots that have different sizes and different intensities so this complicates the problem and also we have some background uh, staining here that we should get rid of so uh, this is a step we can do uh, by using another module um, so we have to use image processing and we have to enhance or suppress some features let's try this so enhance or suppress features again we use the red channel here as an input we want to enhance and what we have different objects we can choose from and here actually it's speckles so the feature size this is roughly the approximate size of the of the speckles and by default 10 should be okay because we used something between 5 and 15 so it's a spot on in the middle so we can leave this uh, fast and let's just rename this as red channel enhanced okay and the step is not at the right position so let's put this before and here instead of using red channel let's use the red channel enhanced and let's see if we get a better uh, result here so this is the result of the enhancement so 
we actually got rid of the background so this is uh, this is good and the next step here we get much more uh, spots detected correctly yeah so again in green are the objects that have been uh, uh, kept and in uh, purple the objects that have been re rejected because they are either too big or uh, too uh, too small and you can even see here in orange objects that are touching the borders so uh, they are rejected also because of that so I mean uh, the vesicles are okay for me so uh, let's continue uh, the thing is that now I have vesicles identified here but they cover uh, all the image we have here detected the cells um, but what we want actually is um, maybe let's say this the vesicles only in the cytoplasm so we can do that by um, using an object processing module which is a tertiary object and if you don't know what all these modules do uh, you get also help here so this time for the module not for the parameters but for the, for the module here and if I click here you can see it identifies tertiary object so for instance cytoplasm by removing a smaller primary object from a larger secondary object so let's use this uh, sorry forgot to add it like this okay so the larger will be the cells the smaller will be the nuclei and the name is already correct it's uh, uh, the cytoplasm we can shrink smaller objects prior to subtraction yeah well why not okay okay so let's uh, check how it looks like here interesting step here so identify tertiary objects and you can see that we have the cytoplasm here uh, correctly uh, segmented so what we can do uh, now um, is uh, do uh, an object relationship um, to get uh, the vesicles only coming into the cytoplasm only located into the cytoplasm so for this we can add another module which is relate objects here um, and I think just put this one at the bottom of the pipeline here so we need to select a parent object and a child object so um, do not use not in cell cytoplasm here uh, so the parent will be the cytoplasm and the child objects will be the vesicles here yeah. and we can calculate per parent means for all child's measurements yep we can also calculate uh, distances if this is uh, relevant to you uh, let's see how it looks like uh, relate objects here yeah. and this is what you end up with so you have now vesicles labeled by cytoplasm so that means that we'll have uh, if we do measurements on uh, on the vesicles we can um, get uh, some information related to the parent so for instance the mean intensity of the vesicles of this blue uh, cytoplasm so that's why it's uh, it's useful to add this uh, this other layer of, of labeling so I just told about measurements here until now we just uh, did some segmentation so uh, to identify objects and uh, separate them into uh, relevant categories so uh, what you can do now is add a bit of um, measurements so there are some measurements uh, modules here uh, and we can do for instance measure object intensity let's just add this one for instance and here we can select the source of the measurement so uh, let's say the red channel the green channel uh, 
the glue is not needed in this case and what we want to measure so for instance the vesicles here and this uh, now we have uh, some measurements if we add a new step here just to show you so we will have a list of uh, all the objects and the features that are measured here so those are just the means of all the objects measured but if you want to uh, have the detailed information you have to uh, export them uh, as um, csv files that you can use uh, in, um, in excel for instance so let's just uh, add this step as well so uh, we add here in the data tools uh, export to spreadsheet um, and here uh, I won't go through all the, 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 the options uh, but let's just say that uh, one that is quite useful is select the measurements to export yes and then you get this uh, press button to select the measurements and you can specify exactly what you want so um, I just want information on the vesicles, for instance, and on the cytoplasm. Okay. And um, let's say here you can see this uh, small question mark, by the way. It just means that since we are in the test mode, uh, nothing will be uh, exported at this, uh, at this step. Yeah. Um, but just, let's just leave this by, by default. Um, another thing that we can save is um, the, the figures, or the representation of our segmentation, the masks. So uh, here we can add another um, another uh, tool. Uh, so we have, uh, sorry, it's in image processing, another module, which is called uh, overlay objects or overlay outlines. It depends on what you want to show. But let's uh, say, for instance, overlay outlines here. Um, so here you have to select the image you want to use as a background. So for instance, the green channel here and the object to display on the green channel would be the uh, cytoplasm, for instance. Um, and let's duplicate this one here and we will use the red channel enhanced let's use the enhanced here and let's choose the vesicles so this will create uh, output images that you will have to save so uh, let's quickly uh, save this as a cytoplasm image And this one as a physical image like this. Okay, and let's add the save step as well. So this is uh, in uh, export. Sorry, where well, I am. File processing. Save image. Yeah. Save images and you have to save what you know, a kind of image the cytoplasm image and we have to select uh, the image name so i usually use uh, the the construction of the file name by a sequential number so it just puts a prefix here um, so it would be well uh, this will be let's call this cytoplasm like this and you will get uh, some digits added there so if you have multiple images you can uh, do the distinction between them and let's do the same for the other image so duplicate this and use the vesicle image and this like this so I think we're all set now uh, and we have just to uh, specify the output settings here so 
in the output settings you can change the destination of the output uh, folders or uh, all the results will be saved there so I have uh, a test folder where I have already uh, some data here so let's just put test2 uh, normally it will create here the folder like this and now it's I have just a, a small message here that uh, because I have changed the output so I have to restart the pipeline but that's okay the only thing I want to do before I do that is just uh, because there is all the steps here that will be visible I don't need that to be visible uh, all the time maybe I just want some key um, key steps um, to, to be visible and if I'm not sure let's say I want maybe the relate object uh, is it meaningful for me to, to see it uh, let's just try the test mode but I don't want to go through all the, the, the steps manually what I can do is um, start the step the test mode here and when you do that you see some um, some pose symbols here and let's say I would just pause just after the step I want uh, to see at the last and here I don't need to see anything else like this um, I just want to see relate objects is, is, is this the, 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 the right image I want to see okay and then I can press run and to run to the next pose object so uh, uh, test pose module let's do this now it stopped and the relate object window is here so this is the one I want uh, to check when the pipeline is running so okay I can just leave this uh, on so this was just a, a lousy example <laughs> to show you how the pause button works because uh, I had a hard time to figure this out the first time I tried to use it so this is what is it's meant to be used um, like this so um, let's uh, quit the test mode here and let's say we want to check this to see if this is okay um, and that's okay maybe we want um, to have the results of uh, the primary objects so the vesicles and here we want this the, the cells let's say we want just these three steps to be displayed here and maybe um, the measurements the, the 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 mean of the measurements so that's it so I will now save my pipeline here save um, project as whatever so let's save it in the new folder I just created so my pipeline like this and now I can analyze the images so it will go through all the steps here and you can see here this is the, um, the command line window that uh, shows what's doing what the cell profiler is doing in the background and here I have now the, the only the four windows I have selected so I can check what was going on so the cells correctly identified the vesicles identified, the vesicles related by uh, cytoplasm, and the uh, mean results. Yeah. And if I have a look at my uh, folder, so let's have a look at test two. I have now all the Excel files I need. Uh, so I have more that I have checked, but uh, I uh, I'm not sure why, but. Um, here I have all the information on all the vesicles and uh, for the cytoplasm it's here so I won't open Excel but you can see here in the preview that uh, everything should be there and here we have uh, the outline of the vesicles and the outline of the cytoplasm actually those images uh, let me just show you this quickly if I open them in Fiji it looks like it's just the outline actually uh, as we see here in the background this image contains more than that uh, if you adjust the brightness and the contrasts here 
yeah i can see uh, the background is actually the channel we have selected into the outline module so it's hidden behind and i don't know why it's not uh, displayed properly but anyway if you want this information it's inside the file as well so that's it for a short introduction on how to use cell profiler uh, again if you have questions leave a comment uh, write me directly if needed and um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.